Thank you, Mace. Good to see you. Usually I see Mace, like I just see Mace's head like popping into the screen. So I get a full body today. That's wonderful. Um, hello, everyone from Colorado, where fall is just kicking in. It was this beautiful, beautiful day of that like crisp, cool air in the morning and the leaves turning golden. Just it seems to happen just in a few days, things begin to turn and and blue sky and warm sun. So um, lovely to be with you this evening, those of you in person and those of you online. Maybe we can take a moment um, just as we begin to settle in just wherever we are and taking our seat literally and figuratively. So giving ourselves a chance here at the end of the day to really find our ground. Arriving. And honoring the earth on which we sit. The history, the depth, the wisdom, the support of the earth on which each of us sits. Perhaps taking a few intentional deep breaths and seeing what you can let go of from the day. What are you still holding perhaps on your shoulders, in your mind, on your heart, in your physical body that you could perhaps lay down? And even that which has not been completed today, just laying it down for now. And from this place, we can connect in with our motivation for being together tonight. Perhaps there's a particular personal reason that brings you here. Maybe it's not specific at all. But together we can raise our aspiration, our motivation that in some way our time together tonight may be of benefit to ourselves and ultimately in some way to others. Thank you. So I was uh, grateful to receive the invitation from Eve and from Lopan Chandra to be with you tonight and to share the Feeding Your Demons practice. And I wondered, I'm, since I don't know you, um, I can see those of you who are in person and two of you are on camera online. So Will you raise your hand if you know this practice, if this is something you've encountered before? How many of you know this practice? Okay. Okay, perfect. So thank you for the phone person who raised their hand. <laughs> um, all right, so a lot of you have, and it sounds like maybe it looks like maybe some are new to this. And as with any practice, good practice, we can always start again. So. We'll begin with a fresh, open 
uh, space and place here. And then uh, I'll share a few words about what feeding your demons is, sort of where it comes from, the view behind it. And then I'll lead you through a process. And then we'll have some time at the end for sharing and seeing what it's brought up for you. Get to be with each other in that way. So maybe I'll say what drew me to this practice and to these teachings. So that the practice itself, feeding your demons as you'll experience it today, was developed by Lama Sultra Malayoni, who is a Western Buddhist teacher, still living with us. It was her birthday yesterday. So very joyfully with us and um, continuing to teach in wonderful, beautiful ways. If you haven't had a chance to meet her, I recommend you um, you do that if you at all can and check out her books, um, one of which is called Feeding Your Demons. But Lama Sultram developed this practice out of very ancient teachings coming, you know, Buddhist teachings, which obviously go back all the way to, to the birth of the Buddha, but specifically from the 11th century and a Tibetan yogini named Machi Glubdran, who lived in Tibet. And as I was, I, I lived at Taramandala, which is Lama Sultram's retreat center in southwestern Colorado. I lived there for four years in the early 2000s. And I remember what caught me about these teachings and this work was a particular teaching that actually came to Machik in the 11th century from one of her teachers. And she said to her teacher, Lama Sonam, she said, how can I best help others? How can I best be of service? And one of the key things he said to her was, Go to the places that scare you. Go to the places that scare you. And what he meant was not go to the places that scare you with armor and weaponry and, a, you know, like an army of guardians, but go to the places that scare you with an open heart and an open mind. And I remember feeling like, wow, what would it be like if I lived my life in that way, with that view? Go to the places that scare you. And I think, and it's, you know, it's a lifelong lesson because what scares us continues to unfold in different ways. And there are subtle things that scare us and there are big things that scare us. And that's always moving. So this is a kind of ongoing, right, teaching and invitation. But I think what it opened for me and what it continues to open for me is actually some intimation of the liberation that comes with that open-hearted courage to go to the places that scare us. So I, I grew up in New York City, and I remember in high school, I had a friend, we were walking, and he said, uh, we came, you know, we were going to go through a cross street, and he was like, oh. I can't walk down that street. I was like, why can't you walk down that street? It was like 68th street or something. He was like, well, I owe somebody money who lives on that street. And if I see him on the street, you know, he might beat me up. So I can't walk down 68th street. Like, All right. Well, you know, we'll walk down 69th street. Not a big deal. But see, in a way, this is what happens with the places that scare us. They're like the streets that we close off. If we think of ourselves, right, who we are, our lives, like a cityscape, there are certain streets we don't want to go to, right? Parts of our experience, parts of our mind, parts of our emotional experience, maybe memories that are like 68th Street. We don't want to walk down that street for fear of what might happen, of what we might encounter. And initially, you know, it's just one street. You go to 69th Street. Doesn't matter. Not a big deal. I'm just closing off that street. But then, of course, you know, two months later, you owe somebody money on 37th Street. So then you, you, 37th Street is off limits. And well, then actually, you know, all of Sixth Avenue becomes sort of territory you don't go to. And very soon, the city that seemed so full of possibility of where you could go and who you could be and what you could encounter and the ways you could be in life become limited, more and more limited, right? 
until we're walking this very narrow passage of what we can deal with, who we can be, the ways we can show up for ourselves. And we actually create a prison in our own experience. And so to go to the places that scare you with an open heart and an open mind is in a way like taking down the barriers, right? One street opens, another street opens, and ultimately there can be the sense of liberation. Like, What if I could be with every part of my experience? What if I could be with every part of who I am, even the parts that perhaps I'm ashamed of or scared of or that cause me sadness? Can I be with grief? Can I be with loss? Can I even be with my despair? Right? Those are the streets we tend not to want to walk down. So this teaching, it's twofold, right? Ultimately, it's a teaching of liberation, but it's a liberation of the open heart, right? Of that open heartedness that comes with being with our pain being with our tenderness, being with our vulnerability. And so it's also, I would say, it's a practice of compassion because it's saying those parts of us that incur or you know evoke fear in us that we don't want to go to actually are calling for some kind of love, some kind of attention, some kind of tenderness. And when they don't receive that, then there are all sorts of techniques and ways we armor ourselves around those vulnerabilities. And those are what we call our demons, right? They're kind of like our, our armor, our mechanisms. So something like our anger or our frustration, our irritation at something, Right. If we sit with it, I sometimes do this. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, I am so irritated. And I just, you know, I'm irritated with my kids and with my husband. And no matter what comes across, it's like a wild animal kind of feeling. And then I sit with it for a while. I'm like, what is what's going on there? And more often than not, what I find underneath the anger, under the irritation, underneath the frustration is actually a lot of tenderness. There's a lot of shakiness. Maybe I know why. Maybe there's a reason and maybe there's no reason at all. So can we be with that tenderness, with that shakiness? And can we learn from it? Like, what is the wisdom? What is the wisdom that is in our demons? What is the intelligence? What's the intelligence in our anger? What's the intelligence in our rage? I'm guessing maybe some of you know Lamarad Owen's book on um, love and rage, and he has a beautiful piece around the that wisdom that lies within rage and to be with that. And so feeding your demons, the view here is that by turning towards that which we are afraid of, or even that which we think will destroy us within our, right, within our experience, within our psyche, within our emotional being, when we turn towards it with curiosity, like, what are you really about? This pattern, this negative pattern, right? Our demons are kind of our negative patterns. When we turn towards it, like, what? What's going on here? What is this? What's beneath this? What's the real need behind this behavior or the storyline that's negatively impacting my life, others? When we turn towards it with curiosity and come to see what does it really need and actually offer it compassion, deep compassion, then that intelligence can, can arise. Then that wisdom within it can arise. The wisdom of the tenderness within it. So feeding your demons is really a profound compassion practice, right? It's a, I was talking about liberation, like turning, going to the places that scare you. And how does that liberation happen? It happens through compassion. 
by profound compassion, actually for those parts of ourselves that we might be the most afraid of, that we would, we wish we could simply make go away. All right. So what are our demons? Our demons, almost Holtram says, you know, if you're looking for your demons, think about what drains your energy. What's draining your energy in your life right now? And that could be a storyline, right? Often we have stories about ourselves. It could be that sort of inner critic that's, you know, undercutting us continuously or not giving ourselves the benefit of the doubt or the critical voice that's continuously harping on something. What could be draining our energy is a relationship with someone else. And and in, in feeding your demons, the demon, as, as much as we'd like to say, oh, it's that other person, the demon is our feeling about that person or about that relationship. So what is it, if there's some, a relationship that you feel is draining your energy, what is that feeling you have about it? Maybe it's upset, frustration, anger. Maybe it is that rage. Maybe it's hurt. Maybe it's that feeling of not being seen, right? And that becomes the kind of demon of like, you always have to try to be seen or try to be heard or try to stand your ground. Our demons can also be illnesses, right? So when we have a physical illness, it drains our energy. So I'm giving you these examples because I'll, I'll, I'll lead you through a process um, short in just a moment. And so I'm going to invite you now as I'm talking here to begin thinking about what is the demon you'd like to work with in this process. So you could work with something in your body, a physical ailment, or even just, you know, right now I have a headache or I have a stomach ache or I'm feeling really tired. Or I'm feeling really irritated or whatever it is. You can start right there. Obviously, demons are also addictions that we have, right? Addictions as patterns of behavior that cover up or are a kind of response to reaction to a deeper unmet need. And so we can, we work with that demon of addiction. We don't right away have to figure out what's the underlying need. But the view here, it's really a view of total integration. It's saying no part of us and ultimately no part of the world is beside the point. We're not busy getting rid of things. We're not like going through who we are and cleaning out and saying, oh, these parts I don't like, so I'm going to toss them. And these parts I do like, so I'm going to keep them. It's actually saying we are whole. We are whole right now as we are, just as we are. Feeding your demons is not some fangled, newfangled sort of fancy process of subtly or not so subtly finally getting rid of the parts of ourselves we don't like. It's not that at all. It's saying, no, we can't actually ever get rid of anything ultimately. It's about coming to understand the place of everything within our lives. And we could, you know, we could extrapolate and say, finding the place of everything within the world. What is the intelligence? What's the wisdom? What's the offering of everything that I experience? And becoming curious about that. So it's based on a very... I would say very beautiful vision or mm, view of ultimate wholeness. We are not broken. We do not lack. We are not busy fixing ourselves or filling in a gap where there is a hole. We're actually coming to know more and more the wholeness that we are. And our demons from this standpoint are actually like riddles. They're like puzzles. And often I, I want to admit very painful puzzles, right? They're the wounds of our being that 
are calling for integration that want to come into that wholeness and they have something to offer us. Our woundedness has something to offer us. It has a wisdom. It has an intelligence. And so here then this process of feeding your demons is one way through awareness, through compassion, to begin to bring that into the wholeness, bring our wounds into the light and make them actually our strengths. And I think we know this all in the course of our lives. The things that we've had to struggle with often are the places and the the ways, the aspects of life where we also have something to offer, where we can become a teacher to others, right? It's um, okay. So I think uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, just a view of um, feeding your demons. And uh, so the way this process works, um, Mamba Sultram developed it out of, uh, as I mentioned, these teachings from Machik Lovdren from the 11th century and a practice, a traditional practice called Ch, which is spelled C-H-O-D with an umlaut over the O, which means severing or cutting through. Um, and it's cutting through our false idea of separateness, that we are isolated, separate beings and cutting into our awareness, our lived awareness of profound, radical interconnectedness. So wholeness, you could say with a capital W. So she developed Feeding Your Demons inspired by Chu with the idea that we feed that which we think will destroy us, right? That's the core. Feeding, not fighting. That's the core paradigm here. Feeding, not fighting. So I'm going to guide you through this process and it'll probably take, it's always a little different, but let's say 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes at the most. And so um, we're going to be doing a little bit of setup with chairs and so forth in a moment. But before we do that, I just want to open it up and see, are there questions? Are there um, uh, questions about like, what am I supposed to work with? Like, is it clear? Like when I say feeding your demons that you want to think about, I'll just say a couple more words and then see if there are any questions or comments. Um, think of, you know, what's draining your energy now? That's a good way in. Something that you can really feel into right now, like that's alive for you in this moment. You know, you might feel like, oh, I've been dealing with this stress for the last week, you know, I want to work with that and maybe work with that. But then maybe something happened just an hour ago that's actually much more fresh in your feeling and go with that because actually our demons are all connected. They, they're, there's this network, the internet of demons, they're all connected. So you can't pick the wrong one. Um, again, as I said, you can work with something physical that's coming up for you can work with a story that's not helpful in your own life. Remember, if you're working with a relationship, you're working with your feeling about that relationship, not the other person or the other people. So let me just see if there are any questions. Okay, okay so... Um, what we want to do, those of you online, as well as those of you in person, it looks like you have enough space, those of you at the collective, um, to you want to have two seats facing each other. So like if I were if I were doing this, I would have one cushion or one chair here. And then I'd have another one like this so that I could be facing myself. And we're going to move back and forth between those seats a couple times. So why don't those of you who are in person, um, I'll give you a moment just to set up and maybe turn two chairs towards each, towards each other. And those of you online, just invite you to do the same. If you're on a couch or something, you could just you know have one part of the couch be one seat and the other uh, seat be the other side of the couch or bed or wherever you find yourself.
Okay. All right. So, um, we do this process with eyes closed. If that feels comfortable to you, um, keeping them closed as much as possible throughout the process. Obviously, just take care of yourself and your body. Okay. So if you'd like to close your eyes, you can do that now. We'll just begin with some relaxation breaths. I invite you first to breathe into any kind of tension you're holding in your body right now. And on the in-breath, bringing awareness to physical tensions. Letting the breath hook on to any physical tension or pain. And then gently letting that physical tension ride out with the out breath. and then bring awareness to any kind of emotional tensions that you're feeling right now perhaps noticing where you're holding them in your body and as you breathe in let the in breath go to these places of emotional tension the breath hook onto them and then let these emotional tensions gently release with the exhale. Finally, becoming aware of any mental tensions that you're experiencing in this moment, worries, intense thoughts, maybe tiredness of mind, gently breathing in with the in-breath, bringing awareness to these mental tensions, letting the breath hook onto them. And then gently releasing them with the out breath. Let's raise our motivation for our practice together. That this practice may be of personal benefit and ultimately that it may be of benefit to others. So I invite you now to bring into your awareness the particular issue, the demon, that you'd like to work with today. 
And really bring it into your awareness right now. You might recall a recent incident or situation in which this came up particularly strongly for you. So you can really feel it right now as you sit here. Really let yourself feel this feeling, the feeling this issue evokes. And imagine that this feeling is somewhere in your body, in your physical body. Where do you hold this feeling in your physical body? What part of your body? Or imagine that it had a location in your body. Where would that be? And now imagine that this feeling in your body has a shape. What kind of shape would it have? kind of shape does it have? And imagine you could see colors, a color or colors of this shape. What would the color be? What's it made of? What's its material? And what is its temperature? Now go ahead and intensify this feeling in your body. Intensify this shape, its color, material, temperature. And now move this shape out of your body. Let it move out of your body and let it arise as a being in front of you, on the seat opposite you. Let it arise as an animate being. An animate being with a head and a face, with limbs. Imagine you could see this being across from you. So let's take a closer look at this being. What's its size? How large is it? What color or colors does it have? 
you could see colors, what would they look like? What colors would you see? What's the surface of its skin like? The texture of its surface, what's that like? Does it have a gender? Now look into the eyes of this being. What is the look in its eyes? What is its emotional state? How might you describe its overall character? There was a smell or smells associated with this being. What, what might those be like? What kind of smells? What kind of sounds might be associated with this being? Do you hear anything? Now notice something about this being you've not yet noticed. So you're going to ask this being some questions and just repeat these questions after me. For those of you online, if you want to say them out loud, you can do that. Just repeat the question after me, but don't wait for a response. What do you want? What do you really need? How will you feel when you get what you really need? Now keeping your eyes closed as much as possible, go ahead and move to the other seat. And take a moment here to enter the body of this being. Let yourself become this being. If it helps, you might assume a posture or a gesture of this being. It helps you really arrive in this body. Mm -hmm. 
And notice what's it like to be in this body? How does it feel to be this being? In your mind's eye, look across and see your original self sitting opposite. What does that original self look like from this perspective? So you, the being, as the being, can now answer the questions that have been asked of you. Speaking as this being from this body. What I want is, What I really need is, and this is the need beneath the want, what I really need is When I get what I really need, I will feel. When I get what I really need. So really imagine getting what you really need as this being. I will feel. And take note of this feeling, how you will feel when you get what you really need. And now keeping your eyes closed as much as possible, move back to your original position. And take a moment here to come back into your own body. And see the being across from you. Now tap back into that feeling, the answer to the last question, the feeling that the being would have when it gets what it really needs. Tap back into that feeling right now in your own body. Just recall that feeling. Let that feeling move through your entire body.
And now dissolve your body into a nectar. And the quality of this nectar is this feeling. Dissolve your body into a nectar, the quality of which is this feeling. And let this nectar go over to the being across from you and let the being take it in, however it can, however it will. You have an infinite supply of this nectar And you can feed this being to complete satisfaction. So take your time here. Letting the nectar go over to the being and the being taking it in. Keep feeding. And as the being takes in the nectar, notice if it changes in any way. Continue feeding. Feed the being to complete satisfaction. If the being is still feeding on the nectar, then imagine what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. If it's still feeding, then imagine what it would look like if it were completely satisfied. And now see, with the feeding completed, is there still a being present? Do you still see a being? And if you do, ask it if it is your ally. If there is a being present, then ask it if it is your ally. If it says yes, then hang on to it for a moment. 
If it says no, or if you're unsure, or if the being dissolved during the feeding, then invite an ally to appear. Invite an ally to appear. So see your ally before you, and let's take a closer look again. Notice the size of your ally. What color or colors are associated with your ally? Do you see Notice the surface of the skin, the texture of that surface of your ally. What's that texture like? Does it have a gender? Notice smells. If you could associate smells with your ally, what might they be? And what sounds might be associated with your ally? What do you hear? Look into your ally's eyes. What is the look in the eyes of your ally? What's, what is its emotional state? What is the overall character like of your ally? Notice something about your ally you've not yet noticed. So you're going to ask your ally a few questions. And again, just repeat them after me without waiting for a response. How can you help me? How can you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? How can I access you? And then keeping your eyes closed as much as possible, move back to the other seat.
Now let yourself become the ally. Enter this body. Become this being. And if it helps, you might assume a posture or a gesture of the ally that allows you to truly enter this body. What does it feel like to be in this body, to be this being? And imagine you can see your original self across from you. What does that original self look like from this perspective? So you, the ally, I've been asked a few questions to which you can now respond. Speaking as the ally. I can help you by. I can protect you by My pledge to you is You can access me by And when that's complete, you can move back to your original seat. Again, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. And 
Again, take a moment coming into your own body. And seeing the ally in front of you. Take a moment here to receive what the ally has offered. Take in the help, the protection, the wisdom. Let the energy of the ally come into you. Receive it. Really take in what the ally has offered. Let the ally dissolve into light. Notice the color of that light. And let that light dissolve into you. And feel this luminosity of the ally's energy integrating into every cell of your body. From the crown of your head all the way down to the tips of your fingers and toes. Take note of this feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. And then let your own body dissolve. And simply rest. in the state that is present. Just rest. Gently bring your awareness back into your body, recalling that feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. And maintain this feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body, even as your consciousness comes more and more into the space, the physical space you're in, into this moment of time. 
and as you gently open your eyes. Thank you, friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you just a moment to maybe stretch or get up or find your way back. Um, we'll just take a moment, just whatever your body needs to do in this moment. Mm -hmm. So we have a little bit of time to share with each other and just invite any, um, any reflections, any experiences, obviously any questions, um, you know, including like where maybe you got stuck somewhere along the way. Um, sometimes we learn just as much from that as some process that went smoothly throughout. So anything is welcome. And as you're maybe thinking about what you might share with our group, um, just a few comments on ways that I find it can be helpful to integrate a process like this. One is, um, is to write. So if you feel moved, you know, you could write down the process. It's almost like writing down a dream, you know, and sometimes we think, wake up in the morning, like, oh, of course, I'll remember that dream. And if you're anything like me, like halfway through the day, it's like, I can't even find my way in. I know I had a powerful dream, but I cannot remember it. So writing can be a wonderful way of, in a way, taking note of what happened, but also the writing process can sometimes bring out further reflections. Um, so that can be a powerful way of integrating the process for yourself. And maybe, I you know if the allies said things that were helpful, kind of notes to self, um, that can be helpful to take note of in some way. Um, also remembering, you know, how did the allies say you could access it? Is there something you could actually like do tonight or tomorrow morning or during the day to access that wisdom? And remember the ally is you, right? It's your wisdom. So sometimes that way of accessing uh, can be really helpful. Um, I know once I had an ally that said, oh, when you see the sun, turn towards the sun and just take in the rays of sun. And I still do that. I have no idea what the demon process was about. I don't even know what the ally was, but it's wonderful when I do that. And so that's the other piece of this process is that it works at many levels, you know, and I think sometimes we want to make sense of it. And I know for me, especially initially when I was doing it, my mind wanted to make sense of it. Like, what did I learn? And what am I supposed to do about this situation? Or what's the underlying meaning? And sort of trying to make conceptual meaning of it. And sometimes we can do that and that's wonderful. And sometimes we can't. And I've come more and more to trust that the process also works at, right? It's working at the subconscious and even the unconscious and at the somatic level of our awareness. And in a way, trusting that something has moved, whether or not I'm able to give that conceptual meaning. And so sometimes I think we're all, I, I think we're all going into the evening now, into the night, you know, not even thinking about it and just going for a little walk or lying in bed and looking at the ceiling or just be, taking a bath, 
you know, whatever it is, just allowing yourself to be as you are can be a wonderful way of integrating it without necessarily needing to make sense of it. So those are just a few thoughts on what to do from here on out. But um, I'd love to hear from you. And I think I'm guessing um, those of you in person can speak into a mic. And those of you online, um, feel free to chat or um, I bet we can unmute you and hear your voice as well. So um, I'll just open it up at this point and see. Um, what was this like for you? What did you experience? What did you notice? It was, it was very physical. Like when it was time to take the demon out, it took a bunch with it more than just where I was feeling it. There was like bonus stuff. So it was healing on multiple levels. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. And did that physicality, that sort of somatic awareness, did that, what was it like for you when you like became the demon or became the ally? Yeah, very physical as well. So it accessed stuff that was in there, sensation, discomforts that I was having actually more than the bonus discomforts went out and then connecting with the ally uh was also very somatic and filling healing Wonderful. thank you thank you yeah we've um we've been also talking you know we're doing a lot of trainings in this work for people who want to become facilitators and uh you know, people bring all kinds of backgrounds. And so we just recently had someone who's a, a movement therapist and, uh, you know, they were saying how actually like moving our demons, right? Like we can dance our demons and we can dance our allies. And so those of us, I think, you know, some of us work in different sense perceptions, different forms of expression. So if you find that the body is a way that you express and manifest easily like this could be almost like a somatic a movement practice as much as a you know we tend to mm, use visual a lot but that's just one way of accessing so. No, I'll go. Um, oh, um, sorry. Grace, you online. Go ahead, Grace. Oh. Yeah, Grace. Okay. Yes, my name is Grace, and I really like this practice. The visualization is always very helpful for me. Um, but I was thinking, like, when I learned to support myself in this way, it, short, it sort of shifts the way that I relate to other people and that I feel like I don't need other people's support, and that's sort of lonely. But I also find it very empowering. Mm. Mm. thank you grace do you want it i just would you be willing to say a little bit more about the piece you said the loneliness of not needing other people's support can you say a little bit more about that um yeah sure i mean like if i if like my ally like um there was like my other being that was what i needed when i gave myself what i needed like i'm not receiving that from anybody else so I can um, be proactive, I guess. Um, and then I guess like if my ally is also part of my brain, like I don't need any like friends to like support me. So what do you think about that? Do you think that after doing this practice, we can just be independent and not be in community, even though we are currently right now talking about it? Mm -hmm. 
a great question, Grace. And I would actually say, um, I think it might influence or it might affect the way in which we are in community. You know, I think um, when we have a friendship, let's say, there are all these levels of friendship, right, or of community. We are communal beings. It is who we are. It's in our animal beingness is that we are communal beings. We need touch. We need closeness. We need connection in the most beautiful ways, right? But I think we can, what what a process like this can perhaps help with is where are we trying to get something from someone else, right? We've, we, you know, we often talk about like in relationship, like someone's needy is kind of a negative thing. And I think what's meant there is like, we can feel that in ourselves towards others when we're like wanting their attention or we're wanting their approval or we're wanting them to recognize us in some way. And it creates a kind of, uh, not openness, right? We're not genuinely with them because we're wanting something from them. And it's the same the other way around. Like when we feel like someone wants something from us, it doesn't feel like a genuine friendship. There's something in there that's like a pulling at us, right? And we can't truly just be with them. And then there are those friendships or those times in a friendship where we realize, I don't need anything. I'm not trying to get something from this person and they're not trying to get something from me. And actually what opens is a profound possibility of joy together and loving each other from a place. Can we love from a place of wholeness? Kind of coming back to what I said at the beginning. I think what it opens us to is loving and being in relationship with others from a place of wholeness rather than neediness. And it's not that, you know, it's not that when we get what we need through this process, suddenly, you know, we're just this little isolated bubble. Because I I think we never are. We can't actually ever be isolated from each other. But it perhaps shifts the way we are with each other that can actually open into greater openness and greater presence. So we're really being with that other person or those other beings or that community without our own personal agenda of what we're trying to get out of it. So I don't know. What do you think about that, Grace? What does that, how does that, yeah, what does it bring up for you, if anything? Um, That's nice. Uh, I guess it made me think that if if we're able to be joyous like in a space like present with one another without like I don't really like when people are needing something from me or if I'm being needy like I sort of withdraw from that situation so maybe we can be more creative when we're present yes that's great that's great yes be more creative thanks for your answer thank you for the beautiful question grace <laughs> Okay, was someone in the in person about to say something too? Was there another? Yeah, I was. Um, I was just going to share that um, I did something physical this time, which I, I haven't done in a really long time. Usually it's something sort of emotional. And the physical one was, um, I guess, one sort of just like little hang up that came up was when I was feeding this one, I kept trying to get all of the goodness it would always shift back on me where I was like oh no I want I want that and it would kept just like changing back from the demon getting the nectar showered onto it and then it would just switch over to me a lot and it was um it was nice it, it, I just kind of would take me out of it for I was like oh no wait not me I'm not feeding me I'm supposed to be feeding the demon or giving it all the good stuff right now and so it, it did sort of change the end I feel like it didn't transform in the way sometimes it usually does like I feel like I had to call in the ally this time instead of it transforming. And I guess I was just felt like maybe some of that was my own distraction with sort of showering my own self, the nectar instead of the demon. So I don't know. This is what happened to me. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, there's no, 
like right or wrong. I think the noticing of it, like whatever you notice is great information, right? So noticing that, and I would almost say like, if you and I were, if I'd been guiding you just one-on-one and heard that happening, I'd say, go ahead, shower yourself both. Remember, it's like infinite supply. So like you get to take it in, they get to take it in. Like we're all like, it's the feast beyond all feasts. Like there's no limit. There's no, there's no, you know, there's no poverty here at all. And so take it in, of course, you know. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You know, just one other piece this reminds me of, um, you know, some of you who maybe know this process more or um, might do it again. You know, obviously the timing is a little difficult with the whole group because I don't know where you're at. But if you remember, there's that point after, so you were the demon and you answered those questions and then you answered that last question. When I get what I really need, I will feel. And then you came back to your own body. And then I said, recall or tap back into that feeling of what the demon would feel like if it got what it needed. And so sometimes that that's kind of where we're nurturing ourselves, right? We're kind of tapping into that, like whatever that was, ease or love or peace or whatever that feeling was that it would feel like when it got what it needed. And we're letting ourselves really feel it in our whole body. And like in your case, I might have said, like, just hang out there for a while and let it just be in your whole body, because that's what the nectar is made of. So you are that you are that your whole body is that and you get to just savor that, just actually rest in that. So that can be a beautiful moment um, at times, too. And you might come back, you know, this, this is often like, if it feels like, oh, the demon wasn't totally done, or there was more there, go back, do it again, you know, and each time we do the process, you can work with the same demon, you know, the same issue, but let the process be fresh. So where it is in your body, maybe it's the same place, maybe it's somewhere else. What does the demon look like? Maybe it's similar, maybe it's totally different. Maybe the ally is similar, maybe different. So each process is completely fresh, um, even if you're working with with something similar. Hmm. Okay, any last comments and Chat obviously is always an option. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all for your time and attention and presence and um, lovely to be with you in this semi-virtual space. Um, But I hope in some way this has been a benefit to you and those around you. And thank you to everyone who made it possible. And maybe we can just close with a, traditionally we do what's called a dedication of merit in the Buddhist tradition, but it's, since it's fall time, I'll share the image that often comes to me is like, you know, if you gather all these golden leaves into a big pile, so we gather anything that might've been good, any kind of insights or openings or just, questions that are alive for us, any kind of goodness that we might have generated in this time together. And we gather it up like that pile of golden leaves. And we gather it out up and we offer it out, offer any and all goodness out to all beings everywhere. Thank you. Have a wonderful night, good rest, peaceful sleep. Be well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Charlotte. Thanks, everybody.